Hey Internet, it's Razmaster02 here, teach you about elementary particles. Now this is probably a basic minute and a half rundown on most of the elementary particles you have in the universe. Now first of all, let's go to matter. You have the quarks, which are the general constituents of matter. They, can, they constitute the neutrons and the protons in the nucleus of the atom. Very important, if we didn't have them we'd all be screwed. Um, you have the up quark, the down quark, top quark, bottom quark, strange, and charmed quarks. These are the six quarks that are make that actually make up the photons and new protons and neutrons in the universe. In addition to these, you have the antiquarks, which are the exact same except they are composed of antimatter. Antimatter is a topic for another time. Second of all, you have the leptons, which are actually a special group of particles that kind of do their own shit. Funny about the leptons is you probably never heard of them, but you've most definitely heard of one of the particles they can the field contains. Electrons. Electrons are actually a fundamental particle in their own in that they aren't actually made up of anything, not that we know of. They are actually the first generation of leptons. Um, some of the other leptons are the tau, as well as the muon. So, for the general leptons, you have the electron, the muon, and the tau. And then, in addition to that, you have the neutrinos. The electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. And in addition to these, you also have the antiparticles of all these particles. So you have the anti-tau neutrino, anti-electron neutrino, anti-muon neutrino. You also have the anti-electron, called the positron, formally. Uh, you have the anti-muon, and you have the anti-tau. Now, if you look down uh, between the division, of course, you see hadrons. I'm not quite sure what mesons are. That's a pot. That's actually a topic for another time. But you actually have baryons, which are the bah, protons and the neutrons that form the nuclei of the atoms. Then, when atoms join with electrons, which are leptons, you have atoms which form into molecules, which are the building blocks of the universe. Now, second of all, you have the force-carrying particles. First of all, you have the gluons which mediate the strong force. The strong force is only applicable on extremely small scales, on the size of below atoms, below atomic scales. So not especially important, however, this is used in nuclear fusion, atom smashing, etc. Next you have the W and Z bosons, which mediate the weak force, which is actually part of the supposed grand unified theory of physics, which contains the strong force, the weak force, and electromagnetism, which has not yet been found, but the search continues. Again, the strong and weak force don't come into play much during everyday life. In fact, you probably have never heard of them unless you have a physics or science background. But they generally deal with interactions on a fundamental level between, between quarks, between uh, between protons and neutrons, between electrons, protons and neutrons, generally on the scale of atoms, no more. Because after those, the, after that, the forces tend to break down. Now third, you have probably the most important force to the average man, or the one that they know the most about. You have photons, which mediate the force of electromagnetism. Electromagnetism includes electricity, as well as the force of magnetism. So, you have photons, which constitute visible light, the light that you can see coming off your computer screen. They constitute gamma rays. They constitute x-rays, radio waves that you hear from the radio. They constitute heat, infrared radiation. They also constitute magnetism, such as the magnetism of the Earth, the magnetism of the Sun, etc., etc., Jupiter's mag magnetic field. Topics for another time. I digress. Uh, frankly, this is probably the most well-known of the four, four forces, so I should probably make my own video about that. Of course, you could probably talk for more than three hours on just on the electromagnetism force. But an interesting thing about photons that a lot of people have not realized is that photons actually constitute almost everything you see and feel as in they constitute heat and light and visible light. When you think about it, heat is actually just 
lower energy light, lower energy visible light, but I digress. On to the fourth one, gravitons, which are actually a particle that have not been discovered yet and aren't included in the standard model of particle physics, which is generally the basic model used by physicists when they want to talk about particles and stuff. Now that mediates the force of gravity, which I'm sure you know a lot about, Isaac Newton, etc. Gravity actually has a cool property in that it is very far-reaching. The gra gravitational field will still be felt even if you are infinity away from whatever object is exerting the gravitational field. Say a breadcrumb is infinity away from you, and you are in an empty universe empty like an empty box. You're on one side of it, and the breadcrumbs on the other. The breadcrumb will still be attracted to you, although very weakly, because you still exhibit a gravitational force. And those all, all fall under the force carrier particles, as well as the four fundamental forces. And I have just described the elementary particles to you. Thank you. Good night.